President Trump says he'll visit the hurricane victims this weekend. Today, he campaigns in New Hampshire after repeatedly attacking his Democratic opponent, opponent in last night's speech to the Republican National Convention. He used the White House South Lawn as a campaign-style venue full of supporters. The president called Joe Biden's record a shameful roll call of betrayals and blunders and said no one will be safe if Biden is elected. The speech ended with fireworks while some of his opponents protested outside. Paula Reed's at the White House. Paula, was the coronavirus an issue there last night? Good morning, Anthony. Well, looking at this crowd, you wouldn't know that we're in the middle of a pandemic that still takes the lives of nearly a thousand Americans each day. Now, the White House says that anyone who came in close proximity to the president was tested for COVID, but wouldn't say what precautions were taken to protect those in the largely maskless crowd. Now, throughout this made-for-TV spectacle, the coronavirus has really only been referenced in the past tense, even as the deaths continue to mount. From fireworks on the National Mall to an entrance down the stairs of the White House, Mr. Trump used the People's House as a political prop like no other president has before. The fact is, I'm here. What's the name of that building? But I'll say it differently. The fact is, we're here and they're not. The White House's mixed messaging on the pandemic was also on full display. While Americans have been told to socially distance and wear masks to stop the spread of COVID-19. We are focusing on the science, the facts and the data. An audience of nearly 2,000 mostly maskless people gathered. And while the president acknowledged the lives lost to COVID-19. As one nation, we mourn, we grieve, and we hold in our hearts forever the memories of all of those lives that have been so tragically taken, so unnecessary. He continued to pick numbers that support his handling of the pandemic. The United States has among the lowest case fatality rates of any major country anywhere in the world. But the U.S. has one of the highest fatality rates in the world based on population. Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, who gave the official pre to the president's speech earlier in the day, painted a different picture. The tragedy in all of this is it didn't have to be this bad. Just look around. It's not like this in the rest of the world. All we needed, guys, all we needed was a competent president. In his roughly 70-minute address, the president returned to the topic of law and order, a focus of the week. He did not mention Jacob Blake, the black man who was shot seven times in the back by a police officer in Kenosha, Wisconsin, even as racial justice protests have swept across the country. Instead, the president attacked what he saw as mob rule taking over cities and blamed Democrats for the unrest. Your vote will decide whether we protect law-abiding Americans or whether we give free reign to violent anarchists and agitators and criminals who threaten our citizens. Biden said earlier in the day that it was President Trump who was encouraging more violence. He just kept pouring gasoline on the fire. This happens to be Donald Trump's America. The Biden-Harris campaign has also weighed in on the last night of the Republican National Convention. They called it a delusion, completely divorced from the crushing reality that most Americans face. Gail. All right, Paula, thank you very much.